I actually went to traditional art school in the U.S., learned how to paint traditionally, got to New York City and found out I didn't really like art. I didn't like the art I saw in museums. I didn't like the art I saw in galleries. I thought it was boring. I didn't, I didn't like art that you needed a written explanation to enjoy. So when I, at the time when I was moving to New York in the late 1970s, this is when punk rock and graffiti art was just starting. These things I did like, these things I found very inspiring. So um, I decided to become a traditional painter, but to rebel like punk rock and to use the freedom I saw from the, ta the graffiti tag trains. So I went outside and started painting outside, doing street art for free. Well, to me, there's a, a lot of work these days that are murals that are um, sponsored or condoned by the people whose wall it is. That to me is not street art. What I do is, um, um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily vandalism, but I don't get permission. I just do what I want where I want. And that to me is street art. I think a lot about how people will receive my work. Um, I'm careful not to make it offensive too much, but I'm aware also that uh, doing street art is an act of cultural aggression. Everyone's not always going to like it. I understand that. I try not to put my stuff in places where it will make people too angry. I'm very aware of that and very conscious of that. I do my best, but I know not everyone's going to be happy to come home and find a piece of mine on their door. My favorite city I've ever worked in is Rome. And I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's not because I'm here. It really is. The, uh, each city has a uh, sort of a, uh, alchemy of conditions, the police, the, uh, the way people are who live here, the condition of the walls. Some, some cities are too modern and nice. Some cities are too clean. I don't think Rome is dirty. I think New York is a lot dirtier, but um, there's history on the walls. So the work I do is, doesn't stand out as much. There's a lot of noise and activity here. The colors here are a little brighter and a little more interesting than any place I've ever been. There's a Mediterranean influence here. I've never worked this far south and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm finding that my pieces um, uh, integrate very well here. These are pieces I made in New York and I thought about what they would look like here, but you're never sure until you get there. And for instance, I'll, I'll take a photograph of a grate in Vienna, do something in New York and bring it to Rome. And so far, every piece I've done is integrated uh, perfectly. The Roman experience, what does that mean to me? Um, well, the, the experience is largely one of uh, being associated with uh, Wunderkammer Gallery. I'm having a, a lovely experience with them. Uh, they're taking great care of me and my family. And we're getting to see the city in a way that uh, probably a normal tourist wouldn't. Um, also, when I go out and do street art, I am accompanied by a couple people from the gallery. So I didn't have to think about always where I was. I didn't have to be looking at a map and wondering which way I was going and how lost I was. They just told me to take a left or go right. And so I was able to concentrate just on my work. So it's a, it's a profoundly uh, uh, more relaxing and, and more enjoyable experience here. I don't like art that has a specific message it's trying to convey. I like art that co opens a conversation that has layers of things that will occur later. Um, so I try to keep an open-ended, uh, my, my, my work is more of a proposal of, uh, of a concept than a, you know, than a, a actual something I'm telling people. Um, Cause I mean, I think we make the kind of art that we want to see and that's the kind of art I like. So that's the kind of art I make. I get this question a lot about the contradiction between um, bringing street art into galleries. 
Um, somewhere, someone may have made up a rule about where street art can and cannot go. So there's apparently some committee somewhere that has decided the ethical parameters of what's what is good and what is bad. And I understand that that's human nature, but in fact, in something like street art, there is no rules. There is no power on high. That's why I like it so much. So people can do whatever they want. And, and it's not my job to judge. It's not my job to judge them. And I understand that there is a uh, uh, conceptual disconnect to bring something from the street inside, but I don't think it's necessarily a sin or something wrong. Um, that said, I do different things that will be exhibited in galleries than I do on the street. There is some crossover, but I'm, I'm aware that when I bring my street art inside, it doesn't look um, appropriate, especially in a very clean white gallery. It looks like a, you know, like a like if you brought a, a a bum inside and brought him to the dinner party. It's a little dirty, a little messy, and it doesn't really belong there. It, it, or it's like a, a dog that's not house trained. So, um, uh, depending on where I show, I will I will try to adapt to that. You know, usually, I try not to. Uh, act like an expert or a power on high because I'm so against that being from a punk rock background. But I think it's obvious and clear that street art, it's not a coincidence that street art has uh, become a force in the world because of the internet. And it's because there's no power on high. It's just people who like it passing the word. When I, I used to do it uh, starting like the 19, late 1970s, and no one knew about it, and it didn't really catch on. I was doing it pretty much by myself for about 20, 25 years. Once the internet started, and once digital technology came with the cameras that made uh, your photos easy to share online, is when everything took off. And that's what I think I love about it, and what people love about street art so much, is it's really driven by the artists and the people who like it, not art dealers and curators, not some random power on high who has a vested financial interest in it. The reality about street art is it's really, you can't own it. You know, there's nothing for sale. And I think that appeals to a lot of people who are jaded from consumer culture. Mm -hmm.